Hey, conceptual physics students. Um, this is going to be an attempt to make a little video of the nature of buoyancy lab that we'll be doing. The pre-lab for this uh, is something you're not used to doing. So I thought I'd give you an example of it, and here goes. Notice the start of this. Uh, two things you should look at as you're examining this. First of all, I gave you the steps of a pre-lab, and I also gave you the information you needed for the lab, uh, the particular lab. In fact, I'll turn this over and show you. What you have in your possession is the actual lab sheet I've given. Now, this tells you things like materials and procedure and, and all of this, but especially important is the section that says ideas. So I'll let you look at that. But now, um, we're going to talk about how to do the pre-lab. Hopefully, every pre-lab will take no more than about 10 to 15 minutes. So here's the first part. Simply from the sheet that I gave you, you can write down that the title is The Nature of Buoyancy. Then after that comes the question. The question is what we hope to learn. And again, from the idea section that I gave you, you can look at where we're going to learn about buoyancy, and you simply have to say something like, and it doesn't have to be the same as I'm writing here, uh, what determines the buoyant force? And so that's what we're trying to, the question we're trying to answer. The research and background is also supposed to be relatively short. You can find this in the textbook, or what's very convenient is the, uh, uh, the internet. There are many different sources. One I find especially useful if we're just trying to learn about something and not write about it in the research paper would be Wikipedia. So Wikipedia has a lot of useful information and it's really concise. And, and uh, when I looked at Wikipedia, it only took a couple of moments to see that, the, that they told me that buoyant, the buoyant force is really supposed to be the same as the, the weight of the displaced water. And that's something we're going to, to test to see if it's really true. Uh, and that's what Wikipedia uh, told us. Now remember, um, all this year, if you find any of these YouTube videos and you want to write something down, um, you can click pause and, uh, and do that. The flow chart is the experimental steps. Now you can tell that from the procedure section that I typed. Uh, and really, you're putting this instead of words, because I already put the words, put them into diagrams. So one thing that you could do in terms of diagramming, as you look at, uh, we are going to put a beaker uh, with some water in it um, and measure the volume. And take a, uh, a bit of Play-Doh and roll it in a ball and, and drop it in. Now, of course, it's not going to float or it likely won't float and as it drops down um, you'll be able to find the volume by the displaced water and so this is kind of what these pictures tell you. Uh, we also will use things like a, an electronic balance to find out uh, the mass and, and formulas to find weight but we don't have to list everything in the flow chart just so that the person reading this gets an idea of what's going on. Then when we're finished with that we'll actually make the play-doh um, or another bit of play-doh into uh, a boat and uh, hopefully a boat that will float and will continue like that. The next part of the pre-lab uh, would be the hypothesis. The hypothesis should be an if-then statement, something we can test. So what, uh, what I decided to use for this is if an object is floating in water, well, then it is lifted with a force equal to the weight of the displaced water. When you make a hypothesis, it, it doesn't have to be something you're certain that will be right. We're going to test the hypothesis. So in this case, it just fits with the question that we, um, we stated. The data table, and this is a, a preliminary one. When you do an experiment, you may realize, well, I need some more uh, places in my data table, and that's okay. This is a starting point. So for instance, when we roll the ball, we want to find the mass of it, uh, the weight by the formula that I mentioned in the sheet, uh, then the uh, mass of the water displaced and the weight of that. We'll do the same thing when we have a boat. Now this is all the pre-lab. Notice I mentioned it in just a few minutes. It only took me just a few minutes to write this, even though I knew what was going on. If you don't know what's going on, the one that takes probably the most time is just a little bit of search on the Wikipedia or some other source, and then this is all completed. When you do the experiment uh, itself, probably what you'll do to start the experiment, you'll have this in your lab sheet, I would use a, uh, a pair of scissors and I would just cut out all of this section here. Okay? So then the reader, as you're doing the lab, will be able to look at these numbers, and when you write things, you, the reader will be able to tell uh, how to analyze the lab based on these numbers. I hope this has been helpful. 
have a good day.